Okay, so uh, we have we have the uh, um, hello, 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 hello. I should have this problem with the with the mic. Hello, hello, hello. This one. <clears throat> Doesn't work. The, the the mic doesn't work. Right? Okay. Recording. Okay. Okay. So it is a great pleasure to have uh, uh, one of our one of our of our, our, our faculty here, Dr. Ji uh, Jun and um uh, who's going to uh, to talk about uh, um, exploring the power of multivariate public key cryptography some for of quantum cryptography uh talk so we are all excited to have you here to talk about this very exciting thank you, thank you. Uh, good morning everyone uh, it's my pleasure to have this chance uh, to share my uh, research with all of us together. And uh, I graduated from the University of Cincinnati and I earned a master's degree and PhD degree here. And after graduation, I have two jobs before I uh, get here. I work in Ohio University for eight years and work at the uh, University of Akron for uh, about five more years. And uh, here's my uh, topic for today. I explain the power of what we're like. Probably key cryptography. So we mainly just use a polynomial as a tool to uh, explore the cryptographic uh, applications, including the encryption, decryption, and the electronic signature. So uh, let's get to the next page. So uh, my talk will have uh, several parts. First, we we'll give some uh, background introduction. Then we go through a small uh, tool example to give you a taste. Uh, what this uh, cryptography uh, system looks like and how we do the encryption, how we do the decryption. And uh, if we want to attack the system, what kind of thing we can do. And in the end, we will have a conclusion and uh, have like five minutes question section. So you can take you have questions and we have uh, time reserved uh, for question session. So let's uh, start from the very beginning. Uh, first thing is welcome to come to this uh, uh, talk. And cryptography become uh, more important than before because uh, we use computer, we use internet more open. And from the big picture, uh, we have national security uh, evolved. And from the personal life, we have personal privacy. Like if we purchase things online, we don't want our privacy, like credit card information being uh, stolen by those kind of hackers. So uh, the crypto system has uh, become more and more important in this world. And uh, the, we are sure thing, MTPC, uh, M is multiple right, more than one variable, so multiple right. P, K, C, that is a short name, public key crypto system. A uh, public key crypto system is a system uh, compared with a traditional secret key system. And the main idea is we have two pairs of keys, one called public key, one called secret key. And those two keys are not identical, so they are different. Knowing one thing is how to dig up the other. Uh, we will show that idea later. So uh, those public key idea uh, is very useful uh, in the internet. In internet. The first thing, uh, the, our system uh, is a non-symmetric, non-symmetric public key system, we always call it non-symmetric. Uh, means uh, that public key and secret key are independent things. And block cipher means each time we do not only uh, do the encryption for one bit or one thing, we want to do several bits together. And that uh, length of the block depends on the uh, variables we use. If we choose today three variables, so each time we do encryption for three digits in one run. And uh, 
to make the system safe, the only way we're sure the variable number would be like 80 variables, even 100 variables. Then each time we can do a uh, encryption for block size of 80 or 100. So that's a block cipher. And the uh, safety of um, MPTC is based on the problem, uh, which is uh, first, the encryption and uh, decryption is very fast. The encryption process and decryption process turns out to be just evaluate the polynomial function. Function evaluation always, always fast, right? But if we want um, to uh, reach the system without the secret key, we turned out to solve a nonlinear decryption system. Generally speaking, that system is hard to solve. And there is an empty hard problem in the back. I will point out that later. So that gave us uh, the safety of the system. And this system uh, is uh, slightly different from traditional crypto system. Traditional crypto system is a lattice to lattice uh, transformation. Like Caesar cipher, the letter A were transformed to letter B, for example. So B were to the F, so lattice to lattice transformation. But we did is a uh, number transformation. So uh, from number to number, yeah, uh, number to number. So number to number, our mathematicians can play with numbers, right? So we are good at numbers. So this system uh, is very easy for mathematicians to start with. And the encryption decryption, just like what I mentioned, only the polynomial evaluation bar so can make the uh, encryption process and decryption process very fast. The system uh, very efficient, and efficient is important. Uh, typically, uh, we want to make those application uh, do not need so much computation power. So that gave us a system a benefit. And from the combination side, this side talking about the uh, risk system uh, turns out to be uh, here with an uh, empty hard problem. Uh, MP hard problem is technically is a uh, computer science uh, term from mathematics side, so very hard to solve. And uh, falling uh, satisfiability problem is an MP hard problem. And to break our system, really compatible to this problem or harder than this problem, depends on what's the field which you're from. So, this example, which is the finance field of type two, so it's pretty much the equal. <laughs> But if we choose the largest field, then it will be more complicated. And uh, if without knowing the secret key, trying to break out the system, uh, we need to solve uh, a system of nonlinear equations. And we system is quadratic uh, polynomial, so you need to solve a bunch of uh, quadratic polynomial equations. For variable is small, like the, for example, I go through, we have some method to solve it like graph and basis method. But if we increase the variable number so far, all the methods we know, uh, like graph and basis method, like uh, drawings, address, and this kind of thing, are all exponential time. So we can easily to increase the variable number to make the system uh, resistant to current known attacks. So that's the... Uh... And of course, of course, attack, there are two levels of attack. Uh, level one, which is enough for uh, hacker. So you need to uh, solve a quadratic equation system to get a normal solution. So for every secret message, you get a pretext <clears throat> will be enough just for level one attack. Uh, level one attack compared with level two, evil, but for our system is already very hard. And level two is sometimes uh, some people were trying to um, test their system, good or not, they will give like uh, $1,000, $10,000 award. If you can directly get the secret key from the public key. So there's a level two attack. Level two attack is harder. You only did computation one time. You calculate to get the secret key, then you do the same thing as the people with the secret key. But this attack, uh, you need to get the symbolic solution uh, with much harder than the level one. But if you can do it, then the hacker will play the same rule with the person who sent the message. So that's uh, 
some background knowledge about uh, what the fan is of system, uh, what what talking about the, the hacking and uh, how far the hacking is. Now we take a look at uh, trivial example. So uh, in this example, we will walk through a uh, simple example. Also, from my point of view, cannot be simplified. So that's the most possible simplified example uh, in those kind of uh, MPPC. And with three variables and the finance field, I just show the type two field. And just speaking, we can show the larger field to make the system uh, more secure. And uh, in this example, we explain the uh, basic concepts like what's the encryption, what encryption, uh, what's attacking, and what's the pure and aggressive to attack the system we have. And of course, we mentioned uh, our system is number to number. So uh, to make sense uh, clear, first, for example, we want to send the message as a unit. Then first, we choose the coding method to transfer whatever the letter into the numbers. And the different coding you can choose from, like you can use uh, the Morse code we have used in World War II, one and World War II. You also can use uh, ASCII code, that's a standard code. But we're trying to use a code uh, to make uh, the letter, every code have a displayable letter for it. If you use ASCII code, some, some code or control code do not display in the print. So first, uh, we use A is zero, B is one, and the book. Then A, B, C, D, E, F, F will be the sixth letter, which will be corresponding to the number five. And number five, the binary word of the number five will be uh, a four plus one. So give us uh, zero, zero, one, zero, one. That's corresponding to the letter F. And A, just uh, zero, so binary word, zero, zero. And U is G U will be a letter which uh, corresponds to the the twenty first letter, and that corresponds to the number twenty. So twenty will be equal to uh, sixteen uh, plus one. So will be one zero one zero zero will be the letter U uh, code. So we have a binary string now from the message we're trying to uh, do the encryption and due to our three variables that we try to chop this binary string into the size three blocks so each time we only encrypt one block so we'll get uh, encryption of zero zero one so that's for three digits and uh, zero one zero second block and zero 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 third block and zero one zero number four block and uh, one zero zero number five block. So we'll uh, do the encryption five times to get another binary string. And that binary string we organize into the size five blocks and each five block binary number will go back to a, a character we choose in the beginning so we can complete the encryption. So that's the, uh, the coding we, uh, that we choose to transform uh, letters into uh, numbers. Now, take a look at uh, the public key and secret key. So uh, for our system, we show uh, the public key. Public key is uh, composed by two parts. Uh, first part, we need to show the finance field to tell the system how we do the calculation. Like uh, we choose the size two field. Field generally has is a structure with a set, so set as two elements, zero and one, and two operations, addition and multiplication. So for a field addition, the only one thing is non-trivial, uh, one plus one go back to zero. So that's like a, well, engineering major that's easy to understand. For mathematician, you say, okay, why, right? But if you learn abstract algebra, it's a uh, trivial result. So uh, mapping are three, we call it F1 and F2 and F3, three quadratic uh, polynomials. And I choose this uh, polynomial on purpose to make sure this one is a, a bijective mapping between uh, GF2, 
switch that battery space to a same battery space that way. Uh, if we map it into the image space, we can always map it back. So later I can go through the decryption. So that's the public two, two part. Uh, what's the finite field which is? What's the uh, polynomials which is? Three polynomials. Then secret key uh, here, same finite field. And uh, the inverse map of this F1, F2, F3. And uh, generally speaking, we make sure this two are different. The F1 and F1 looks like same X times Y plus X times Z plus Z plus one. But uh, F2 and G2 are different already. You can see uh, the leading term for the item X, Y, X, Z, Y, Z. But here is only X, Z, Y, Z is the quadratic term. So F2 and G2 different already. And F3 and uh, G3, G3 have X, Y, X, Z, Y, Z term. And F3, X, Y, and Y, Z term, so they are different. And to attack the system just named, just publicly I publish, well, for example, on my web page, that everyone can uh, visit my web page and get this public key. But the attacking means, can you solve <coughs> This system, P equal to this, Q equal to this, and R equal to this, to solve to get X, Y, Z is a function of uh, P, Q, R. And that problem, uh, not easy. And typically when uh, the variable number increase, the complexity will increase exponentially. So that's the, what's the public key, what's the security, I mentioned earlier, the system is non-symmetric. So it means those two keys are different. Typically, just a mapping point different. Now we have the public key and secret key. Now we can talk about uh, how we use that to do the encryption. So early, we already have the FAU can transform as a binary string like this way. And we chop into the size three pieces. Now encryption just from here to here, and use those same coding. We can go back to the uh, secret message. So FAU after encryption will become uh, HZ2 by the coding we choose. Let's see how that thing can be done. First, uh, we do for the final screen we have here. We will use the size three block like zero, zero, one, then we evaluate the function. Then after the evaluation, we can uh, to get the uh, uh, ciphertext use the uh, coding label we have. So for example, let's do it at first block, zero, zero, one. X, Y, Z is the same variable. And if we have um, more variable, like one and three, we can use X1, X2, X3. But today we just choose a three variable case. So let's go back to the uh, public key part. So the, uh, this time we only have Z to be one, X, Y to be zero, right? So we try this public key. Let's do one page early. Don't mess with the security. So the F1 will be X times Y, zero. X times Z, zero. Z is one and one plus one. And earlier we mentioned a one plus one is zero. So we can get uh, F1. Is zero. Makes sense, right? They're just function evaluation. No trick. So F2, so X times Y, Zero times zero. X times zero, uh, X times Z, uh, zero times one, still zero. Y times Z, uh, zero times one, uh, still zero. And X, which is zero, Z is one, and uh, one plus one, zero. So the F2, also zero. 
from the function evaluation above. Then F3, X times Y, 0 times 0, 0. Y times 0, 0 times 1, 0, 0 times 0, 0. Then Y is 0, Z is 1, so we can get 1. Therefore, 0, 0, 1. We will uh, even to that matrix here, matching to the 0, 0, 1. And later, we can see that 0, 0, 1. And we do the same thing for zero one zero, then that will go to the one one one. So zero one zero will go to the and uh triple zero will go to the one one zero. So triple zero. Then zero one zero again, that's the other sign. So zero uh, is one second time to get a uh, one one one. Then last we get one zero zero. Then we get to the uh, last three digits at uh, one zero six. So you can see some digits are hit the same, but some digits uh, change the the, the sequence. So make the sequence totally different now. Make sense, right? So we can get the uh, this process is the inflation process. The rest thing is just the uh, trying to decoding from the binary sequence back to the letter. So we chop into the size five, the so zero, zero, one, one, one. So it'll be four plus two plus one, which is seven. Seven is the number eight letter, A, B, C, D, F, G, H. So we call it H. Similarly, for the first five digits, we use that coding table to get D. Uh, last five digits get the number two, so we can get the encrypted message. Make sense, right? So that's the encryption only involved with the evaluation of the polynomials for those binary string, each block over the finite field. So the finite field, the only thing is we need to keep in mind is one plus one zero. So that's the encryption process. Decryption process are totally reverse the whole time. See here, from the given secret message HV2, we turn we use a coding table to transform into a binary tree. Then for the binary string, we chop into the size three pieces, and for each piece. Use the secret key. This time we evaluate with the secret key as you want to see three to get a another binary string, and that binary string you the coding table to go back to the actual letter. So we finish the decryption. You can see decryption process and encryption process pretty much the same difficulty level. Makes sense, right? Just evaluate three quadratic polynomial over three variable blocks. Over the finite field. So that's the uh, uh, encryption and decryption process. Then uh, we're talking about the um, attack or the encryption analysis. Then if you have a system, how we attack it? So, like uh, zero, zero, 001, now we know the standing three bit is zero, zero, 001. So we need to solve. F1 equal to zero, F2 equal to zero, F3 equal to zero, and trying to stop to go back. If we can go back, we can reveal the coding binary sequence for the plain text. But following this one, uh, it's nonlinear, right? So those linear equations are the linear algebra knowledge we cannot use anymore. We cannot solve a linear equation system use matrix method not work not work we have some quadratic term there but we have a similar sign we call xl algorithm uh, which we will point out later so that's a level one attack level two attack just do one more step this time i don't uh, it, because uh, we don't break the system now six piece by piece i want to attack the system overall that means uh, we want to solve this PQR variable 
So that's the F1, F2, F3 position. And I was trying to solve this system to get X equal to G of PQR, G1 of PQR, Y equal to G2 of PQR, Z equal to G3 of PQR to directly get back to the private key polynomials. That's the level two attack. Makes sense, right? So what's the mm -hmm. problem there? The next thing, let's say how hard uh, the problem is for the level one attack. The far that nonlinear is the system, we have a, a algorithm induced very long time for the XL algorithm uh, method. It's pretty much similar as the matrix method. The matrix method, we have a one column corresponding to the variable X, one column corresponding to variable Y, and in the end, we have a one column corresponding to the constant and do the gauss Jordan elimination to try to solve it. But here, XL algorithm just make a column for X times Y term, get a column for X times Z term, and one column give for X times Y times Z term, right? And to do the similar thing, but that algorithm is here, it's going to kind of here. Makes the system uh, hard to break. And second one is uh, due to the whole thing uh, is on the abstract algebra structure. So uh, we can try to get the Grobner basis generated by uh, F1 equal to P or F1 minus P give us a polynomial for the Q, F2 minus P, Q, F3 minus all. And those three were generated an idea. And uh, the Grobner basis method can uh, try to calculate the idea and get the solution. So that's also a uh, very traditional method. And that's the exponential time. And of course, uh, from the original uh, Grobner basis algorithm, we have uh, developed some uh, fast uh, Grobner basis algorithm, like a uh, oh shit. Uh, he has uh, two algorithms, one is F4, one is F5. Uh, this one we use very open, uh, which is a fast group basis uh, algorithm, which can be used to attack the system. And uh, in fact, it's uh, in a Magma software. Uh, Magma is a uh, uh, abstract algebra software uh, developed uh, in uh, Australia, Sydney University, I think. So very powerful to work. And also, uh, he developed an F5 algorithm, but for some system, our uh, checking our crystal analysis turns out sometimes uh, F4 is better than F5 for some examples. And also, uh, my uh, GC advisor, uh, inside, uh, he has an uh, algorithm called Zhuang's algorithm. He just tried to uh, change the solving a much variable polynomial equation system into uh, transform the whole thing to solve a single variable polynomial but over a larger field idea. But uh, all those algorithms are exponential time means uh, we can increase the variable number uh, to resist the attacks so far. Of course, uh, when you increase the variable numbers, uh, they, they, you have, there is a cost you have to pay. So when we have more variables, so we need more storage space. And also the equation for that, even just evaluation, but if we have too many variables, so it take more time to make the, uh, but that's one thing you deserve to pay, right? That's a cost that you deserve to pay if you want to make the system secure. So that's uh, some uh, related uh, attack method we know so far. The next thing, yeah, let's quickly go to the conclusion. So, um, FTTC uh, offers double uh, security capacity, uh, capability uh, because uh, about a few years before, we have um, have an idea of quantum computer, means that if we have quantum computers, uh, what kind of systems do you say? And RSA has been used a very long time, but turns out uh, RSA based on the integer factorization problem. And if we have a powerful quantum computer, uh, integer factorization is as a linear time algorithm. So make the, or the polynomial time algorithm 
to make the RSA when not secure anymore uh, if we have a powerful TV computer. But a few years before, what I heard is uh, the Clinton computer only can do the factor out the 16 as 3 times 5. So it's still very weak. But in the future, when uh, mechanical engineering or material science has a more powerful system come up, uh, with RSA being great for done, uh, MPC can be a very good alternative to be able And also, uh, the, the system uh, is encryption process is number to number. So that makes it to be a very good uh, system to start from for a uh, mass major, computer science major student, because it's number to number, right? And um, it's efficiency because encryption, decryption we mentioned, only the polynomial evaluation over the finance field, which is only involved with multiplication, calculation, and addition of the calculation. So those are both can be done uh, very quickly by computer and by uh, human beings can do very quickly. And the complexity uh, is an empty hard problem in the back, so it makes it hard to break. And in this work, uh, it can be uh, very useful. So that's the uh, some conclusion we have. Uh, any questions so far about uh, I just. Oh, okay. So that uh, involved with the key generation process. So the generally speaking, uh, for a PPC system, if you want to design a good system, you want to make sure two things. First thing, the uh, brute force attack model work. That's why today I only tell you so for uh, example. You can easily use brute force method to try every possibility of uh, what's the pre image of three phase sequence. There are eight possible, possible numbers. And what the image looks like. And you can try to get a secret key for your numbers. So you want to make sure the brute force. Okay. So we need uh, in real system we need to uh, increase the uh, variable number to make uh, this attack not work. Second thing, uh, you asked about the design of uh, B and F. So generally, in the design, first uh, we want to make the uh, mapping F to be. This is projective mapping. You should uh, not make uh, this happen. So you need to choose F to make sure uh, not two sides mapping to the same image. Otherwise, when you're decoding it, you will have difficulty to see C is going back to A or B. Makes sense, right? So you need to choose F to make this not happen. And the example I chose, the easy way, which I chose, F, B, F, bijective. But here speaking, uh, no, no need, no need. We only need to prevent this case for encryption uh, purpose to make sure the same image do not go back to two different three images. Otherwise, you, it's hard for you to see uh, which one is the right uh, context to start from. But to keep simple, I just choose the bijective mapping that always works. Then bijective mapping guarantees the inverse of this, right? So when I design, I, uh, I choose that on purpose to make the inverse of this. The second thing, we want to make sure the inverse G is different from F, right? Because bijective mapping, you can use identity map, right? So zero, 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 zero. But that way, you go around same thing and your ciphertext, same as your plain text. That's no good, right? So FAU, encrypt to get FAU. Means you did not sign. You just wish to hide. So we make sure that G is different from F. 
And of course, uh, if you want to think about more, you want to make G auto find by giving an app. Is that right? And of course, my uh, design is trying to find a bijective mapping uh, from eight elements to eight elements. We call it a permutation. Then take a look at what that mapping looks like over the finite field of size t. And I have a long code, maybe I can share with, with you a little. See what that actually looks like. So here uh, for the mapping I I show you today, I show the permutation, uh, the five, two, seven, four, three, six, one, eight. So that permutation guarantee that uh different eight, three. Length three uh, binary sequence will always go to the same eight size three uh, sequence. So everyone have an image and their case not happy. <laughs> so I should have some information to work with us. But this method, uh, if we increase that variable, we're hard to go through because that communication will become very large and the system cannot handle. And at the moment, I can make the four variable case, five variable case. Roughly works. But for more than five variables, uh, I need to uh, redesign the code to make it work to get the right choice. Of course, uh, in the design, uh, another thing to increase the variable, we call it a triangular method. Means uh, we do not need to make the whole thing work. We just choose a chrono mapping like the system I chose now, there's three variables. Then start from next variable, what I need is uh, F4 equal to the number four variable plus a quadratic polynomial of what one variable. And repeat this process, so F5, equal to the number five variable plus another quadratic with first previous uh, four variables and so on so forth. We can use it to generate a big uh, system like 80 variables or uh, 100 variables. Those methods are called triangular methods. And of course, after we generate system, system we need to use a linear mapping L1 used in the lab and a linear mapping L2 in the right to lock the system to make sure that the attacker cannot see this triangular structure. Then we can uh, make sure the system is well designed and also the attacker cannot solve you the same way we did. Solve this one, then next one, the next one. one. <clears throat> but that will increase the uh, uh, increase and decrease uh, time, but that is a PS10. And that's another design is a triangular structure to de design a large scale of uh, GPU system. Make sense, right? But that's a good question. That's a good question. Uh, any other questions? Yeah. Yeah, so you you basically try to uh, rig the system into the, the one way that's of the system. What what about other kind of attacks that cannot just be really uh, like uh, adaptive attacks? Uh, uh, like if you have if if you if you're able to query some description of some of some chosen architects, uh, is it is is it easier to uh, to uh, detect other architects? Oh yes, that that's the same thing uh, I mentioned earlier. So uh, your question is if we try all the three bits, to uh, increase it and trying to from that cell to solve to get back to the 
Well, for 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 for, for privilege, it's easy because you can do group group four, but if you have many things. Right, right, right. So you have large registers. Yes, yes. So uh, the answer is no. The answer is no. So uh, traditional uh, working the system, uh, we try to uh, if we build a system repeatedly and use the system to do the encryption, and we can find the pair of the pretext and the ciphertext, right? So if we have enough of them, we may find a way to break the system. But for this uh, MPKC, say if we have the 80 variables, for example, <laughs> then uh, we need each time to uh, block size for the 80, right? And how many of those uh, binary strings exist for 80 uh, variables? So there are two to the 80 binary strings exist. And this number is uh, pretty large already. So 8 to the 10 is about um, uh, 1,000. Yeah, yeah, so this uh, is about 10 to the uh, 30. Now. And uh, when you keep increasing the variable, because technically, whenever the system not appears, we can increase the variable, right? Mm -hmm. So theor theoretically, we can increase the variable as big as we need, as long as we can make sure the encryption, encryption is in the accepted time frame. So the whole universe, we only have about that. Uh, 10 to the 80 particles in total. As long as we increase the variable number to a particular level, like this one, uh, 80 is about 10 to the 30, so 240 would be 90. Um, that same amount of the particles in the universe to make the system unbreakable anymore. So we can always increase the variable to make the system safe. The problem is, how many variables is enough, right? Because when you increase a variable, you pay the cost. The storage, those polynomials in the storage space. Mm -hmm. To increase, you need to do the evaluation. But more variable means longer calculation time. So that means you pay more cost. So the system always a balance of security and the efficiency. You want the system to be more secure. Sometimes you have to uh, sacrifice your efficiency. But if you want the system more efficient, more efficient sometimes uh, you need uh, to make the system not that secure enough. Make that right. But as long as you increase the variable number, definitely you can make the system unbreakable. But the problem is, if that unbreakable system is good for us, most likely it will be no, because Encryption decryption will take too long time when not make that if you go. Make sense, right? And from the system itself, we can always do that. But in real reality, we only can choose a particular level of the system to make sure it is resistant to pure uh, computer speed, for example, supercomputer speed and pure uh, uh, speed. Mm -hmm. question. Yeah. Um, regarding, so you, you talk about uh, the use of of, uh, of your cryptography for encryption, right? Yes. But so in, in, in the next competition, I think that the only submission in uh, that is still alive for you know, multiple cryptography is for this for Yeah. For encryption, right? Yes. So do you think there is, so why do you think that? That there was no uh, like 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 uh um, the entire didn't didn't submit any any encryption. Uh, yes, yes. So here are we talking about the two main applications of uh, cryptography. <clears throat> of course, if you uh, talk about more details, there are a lot of uh, other applications, but uh, the main uh, application so far is uh, crypto systems. And we do not uh, use uh, as a system uh, based on the two main reasons. Uh, one reason is currently uh, the quantum computer is not powerful enough yet. So RSA is there already. <clears throat> There's no need for us to 
immediately bring out this as a search system automatically. But where someday we have a very powerful printing computer, I believe I can type the our group or easily to uh, save it out as a search system. And another thing we use is a signature. So uh, at the moment, most uh, publication of our group are typically my advice is uh, in the signature scale because uh, due to the system efficient. So signature, we want to make it quick, right, fast. You don't want, okay, just there's by signing documents take more than one day. Nobody wants that. So signature itself, we want it very quick. And also sometimes those electronic uh, electronics game of the signature we want to use the low cost that we want the efficient and low cost. That means uh, we do not even need a PC or supercomputer to do the uh, signature process. We can use uh, like in a small part application. We only have a small post machine to read your credit card information, this kind of thing. So we only have limited computation uh, power. So uh, our MPC are boosted for uh, those requirement of the signature scheme. That's why uh, we have, like Jintai uh, has the rainbow uh, system and uh, I believe we use as the signature scheme, right? which based on the HF uh, hiding field and creation. But that's a good question. That's a good question. And I believe uh, we need the time coming, we will have our own system uh, to bring up. But at the moment, due to uh, the quantum computer is not powerful enough, there are no this uh, immediately need in the market. We don't need it. We spend too much energy on that. And I believe he's trying to make his uh, research result go to the market as soon as possible. So he has several patents, and then um, most are in the second system. Because people think, okay, this is why you use it, then they pay the money, right? So that can bring the research group more funding to continue to do deeper. Is that answer the question? Yeah. Thank you. 